Google's Pixel phones are always touted as the best for Android purists, with super slick scrolling, stock Android, and the lack of any confusing bloatware. And spoiler alert, the Pixel 3 continues this trend, and it's still one of the nicest Android phones that I think is available on the market today. But this time around, we do have that uglier design, and we have a higher price tag. So does this old dog really have enough tricks to make it worth buying? We'll be exploring all of this in this video, but it's also been kindly sponsored by Audible. Audible is one of my most used apps, and it offers thousands of audiobooks that you can listen to anywhere. With Audible membership, you get a credit to use each month towards a book, no matter the cost, and then it's yours to keep forever. Audible are offering a 30-day free trial to all PC-centric viewers, which will let you try the service with a free book, and you'll also get two free Audible originals to keep from a list of curated titles. Hit the link down below to learn more, or if you're in the US, simply text PC-centric to 500-500. The Pixel 3 then. Depending on whether you're looking at the XL or not, you'll either be very pleased with the clean design language, or be grimacing at what could be the ugliest notch currently on a phone. And I think that this is the most divisive point, and is clearly something to address, because I completely agree that its design is far behind key rivals. The entire device is now off-center, with a large speaker grill at the bottom that handles 75% of the volume, which is so, so annoying, and a cutout at the top that houses two front-facing cameras. The screen itself is of very high quality, and it's a decent step forward from last year's rather desaturated affair. The Quad HD OLED panel provides brilliant contrast in movies and games, and text is always crisp and super sharp. I'm not sure it's quite up to the very best from the likes of Samsung, and there is a slight blueness to the screen, but generally speaking, I've had my review unit for two weeks, and I've been very impressed with the screen this time round. Also new for 2018 is this new colour, not pink, which goes along with the white and black from last year. And to their credit, it isn't quite pink, it's more of a beige, so if you're after the new colour, this is what you're going to want. An area we are seeing a huge step forward though is with the construction of the device, with the move from metal to glass. And I've never really seen a finish quite like it. The usual two-tone approach is keeping the clear top section, but they've added a translucent frosted panel to the bottom, which makes it far more premium feeling in the hand. And I really can't overstate this, as it's probably the thing I like most about the new Pixel 3 when you compare it against its older sibling. The fingerprint reader is located in the same handy spot, right in the middle of the phone, and thanks to the glassy back, wireless charging is now present and correct. Cable lovers though will of course be able to play it safe with a single USB-C on the underside, but as sadly commonplace these days, both the headphone jack and microSD ports are completely absent. My main conclusion with the design of the phone is that it is a small step forward, but I certainly wouldn't put a notch on my phone if I had the choice. It's certainly not been a deal breaker for me though, as after an hour or so, you'll completely forget all about it. It's only when watching videos that it becomes obtrusive. So if this is mainly what you use your phone for, turn off the notch, or just consider something else. The area you'll have no qualms with though has to be the camera, as this remains an absolute corker for mobile photography. There's a simple 12.2 megapixel snapper on the rear, as well as two selfie lenses on the front. Video looks great with stabilized 4K 30 frames a second footage, and there's now a wide angle camera on the front that allows for selfies with a larger field of view great for travel and group photography. While the rear camera hasn't really changed much from last year, the combination of hardware and software are melted together so beautifully, taking breathtaking landscapes with huge yet natural dynamic range. While there aren't any extra focal lengths to take advantage of, Google have implemented a load of software features, such as a software super zoom, a top shot feature that will intelligently find a better photo if you've actually missed the thing you're trying to shoot, as well as a night mode, but this is actually coming a little bit later, so sadly couldn't be tested. The portrait mode though is something else, and it will beat out all other Android phones, at least in my experience. Selfies don't always pick out my glasses correctly, which is a tad annoying, but the rear camera takes some phenomenal photos that can even replicate true DSLR images. Day-to-day -day life with the phone is very pleasing, as it's very nice to hold and easy to operate. Performance is smooth no matter whether you're playing a game or scrolling through Instagram, and the phone is noticeably more fluid in day-to-day -day operation than the Mate 20 Pro. 
There's not that much to it, and it is just largely down to the cleanliness of pure Android and the way it feels when you move your thumb on the screen, but it's definitely a factor that shouldn't be ignored. Individual application performance though is an area that may be a little bit weaker when you compare it to the Mate on the iPhone XS, as they both have a more powerful processor for more performance in intense applications. An area that I would describe as solid would be the battery life, as for the most part it's been pretty good, it hasn't actually run out on me at all yet and I've done some long commutes where I've been listening to audible audiobooks, some YouTube videos, hotspotting to my laptop, all of this stuff and it's been fine. But I would say that if you use this phone in a year or two, after you've got more on it, after the battery has started to degrade a bit, you're probably looking at just under a day of use, so do bear this in mind, as it's not the strongest phone out there for battery, that's got to be the Mate 20 Pro. The thing with the Pixel is that it really is a fabulous phone, and I do love it. However, at the starting price of 899 it's not really doing that much to stand out. I'm certainly someone that would be happy to pay for the ultimate Google phone, but with OnePlus offering a close to stock Android experience with a cleaner design for less money, and then Huawei offering far more features for just a little bit more, it's almost hard to justify this time around. The Pixel is fantastic for images, it has a great feel in the hand, and it offers the best Android experience. I just think that for the money, I almost expected one or two things to come along that would really wow and blow us away, but sadly they haven't. I would definitely say that this time around it is a recommendation, but it's almost a cautious one. No matter what phone you choose though, something that shouldn't be ignored is Audible. Ever since I signed up to the service at the start of the year, I've been far more relaxed on commutes, and I now have rediscovered the joy of books without needing to find the time to sit down and actually read them. I never knew that the Witcher series was actually based on a series of original novels, and all of them are available on Audible. I've actually just finished the first, which is called The Last Wish, and it's all about a few short stories behind Geralt, including how he met Yennefer while fighting a genie in a bottle. You can download The Last Wish, or any other book of your choice, for free with a trial of Audible. Simply visit audible.com slash pccentric at the link below, Again, audiobook that's free for life. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you have, and get subscribed to see the review of the Mate 20 Pro when that comes out in a week or so. But let me know down in the comment section below. Do you like the Pixel? Do you hate the notch? Is it the phone that you should be getting, or is it a bit disappointing this year? Always really interested to hear your thoughts. But regardless, a massive thank you once again to you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.